Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today we're going to cover FM synthesis, probably one of the most time consuming forms of synthesis, I will say. So what I'll show you is this real world, how to use it, what I use it for. Um, in short, it's good for percussive sound design. It's good for um, like sign based sound design. So let's first start with some chords. Let's go to the piano roll. Let's hit Alt P and let's just accept whatever chords this creates. That was pretty cool. All right, so now we have a sine wave. So if we open up FM8, I think this is the best tool for learning FM synthesis. There's a lot of other plugins out there, but not all of them are easy to make it understand FM synthesis. In short, you have different operators. You could think of these like oscillators and operators can do different things. You know, it can basically the whole game is modulation. So I could have one sound move another sound. So the same way a big brother can shake a little brother, it's the same exact thing with sounds. You could have a sound, which is the little brother, and then have a big brother like E, in this case, modulate F, and shake the uh, you know the little brother over time. Now, you know a little brother, like a kid, if he's like, ah, and then you shake a kid and he's like, ah, like that, it's the same thing here, except pitch-wise, not just volume. So we can create envelopes in different shapes for E. So let's say you want that sound to build up over time. We're going to tell E to have a long attack. So now this texture of E modulating F will build up over that amount of time. We can also have it modulate the sound at a very short decay. This is for more percussive stuff. You can go in and make E's envelope very short. So now it only adds texture in a short, short, short amount of time. So I'm going to crank it up so you can hear. So FM synth is used for adding small little transient stuff to sounds to make it more interesting. And the way you can make it more metallic is raising what's called the ratio, in the other words, the octave. So it works in double. So one goes to two, that's the second octave. Two goes to four, four goes to eight, eight goes to 16, and on and on and on. And the higher you go, it becomes more metallic. So again, we're using a sine wave to control another sine wave's pitch. And we're using a sine wave to control the pitch of the sound. Okay, so that's how you create those metallic kind of EDM chirp, chirp, chirp type of sounds. Um, in this case, we're building a chord, so let's pull it back a little bit. So you can also have it. So you can, instead of one, you can do 0.5. It's gonna make it sound more rumbly. Or 0.25. Okay, so the slower, the more brrr, you start to hear the actual movement. That's more for like sound effects. Okay, so I would modulate it with a quick transient. Now we need to go back to F in this case, and it, let's say you're making, nah, in this case, we're using chords, so never mind. But if you're using a kick, you would turn your ratio to zero and then use your hertz and just type in your core hertz. Let me show you what that would sound like. So if you want to design a kick with FM synthesis, instead of using the ratio, which is based on note values, we're going to use the hertz values and let's type in 60 hertz. So now we have E modulating F and we need to give it F an envelope like a kick. It hits and fades out. So if I take off F, or excuse me, E by right clicking, the sound is going to But when I add E, the modulator, it adds a knock because we're modulating the frequency in a very short amount of time. And again, the more metallic you want, the higher the ratio. And that's how you get more into EDM type sounds. You can also modulate it by, again, zero ratio and then a hertz value. So let's say 200 or 100 or 120. Okay, so it's up to you what the value could be here. There's no right or wrong answer. But in this case, we're going to use the one ratio. And then at this point, you could set it to velocity sensitivity. So that velocity based on your actual piano roll, you could have it play lower or higher. So let me show you what that sounds like. So if you turn velocity sensitivity up, the lower value here will only modulate the sound less. 
So the higher velocity will add more transient. So to hear this over time, let's add more notes. I know I'm moving quick, but these are the tools. These are the features I actually use about FM. So if I fade this, you're going to hear more and more of that second operator manipulating F. So that's great for like house bass as well. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick. So, or like a Call of Duty sound. So if, let's say you're making like some Call of Duty. You could have a velocity sensitive. Okay, maybe ring, let this note ring out a little bit longer. this where it's actually a note and this is like a call of duty type sound okay so that's how you can make it move over time and be more expressive Okay, so those are the, the foundational elements. Now let's make cool sounds. I'm gonna quickly move through this because this this could take a while. Um, so let's see, let's go to, I don't even know how to reset this thing. Let's go to new sound. Okay, so by default, we're starting with the sine wave. And so I'm thinking about each sine wave, like what texture do I want out of it? Remember the difference between sounds is the harmonic content of a sound. Everything is a sine wave at the core, but it depends on uh, the harmonic of the sine wave that creates different waveforms. So if I modulate a sine wave by a sine wave, you actually get different waveforms. There's more of a saw sound by modulating a sine wave to a sine wave. Okay, so there's different things you could do. So in this case, I'll be simple and make it a sawtooth. Let's go to effects or master. Let's add some more voices here to make it bigger. And let's detune these voices and pan them. And let's make sure we're playing the chords. We can add a little portamento here. cool unique sound so you don't really need to know a lot about fm to get good sounds out of it now let's just think about each operator as its own sound that we're just adding to it so let's send e output which is a simple sine wave and let's modulate this at a different amount and what i'm going to do to make it sound different than f is offset the hertz by just a little bit so let's do like 0.1 I try to stay within 31 cents. Or I'm not sure. Actually, hertz would be, if I'm, yes, yeah, cents, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take off some of the analog function here. Okay, so now let's add D as an output. Let's make this really high pitched. So let's go to ratio, make this like four. So we're raising the octave. Let's modulate it by itself. So you could do a lot again without knowing too much about FM. It's really just about how much do you modulate a sound by. Uh, and then lastly, we could add C to modulate D over time. So let's do that. Tell it how much. And then let's tell C to modulate that over a long period of time. And let's create a ratio that's really high. And then let's lower the level here, the amount. And at this point, you're just going to add effects like chorus, delay, reverb. Okay, so 
So now we have a pretty cool sound, even taking off the rever reverb and chorus. <laughs> sound that we have there okay so that's fm synthesis um, now as far as percussion it's all about thinking more so in the hertz values as opposed to the ratio so again going back we're gonna have f instead of the ratio we're gonna use the hertz let's say you want to make a kick let's start at 60 hertz and we need to shape the kick because the kick is not just like boom it just boom has a short decay curvature to it we have a sound design course at busyworksbeats.com on how to sound design your own drum kits so just go to busyworksbeats.com and sign up for premium to learn how to do all this. So now what we're gonna do is turn that sound down. Let's do a little Kanye. Let's do do, 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 do. Oh, I messed up. make our own chord. Okay, so now I'm getting too musical. I need to just use this as an example. twist of events okay so I like that sound now let's start working on this kick again it's a percussive element so right now it's just playing a 60 Hertz sine wave and it has a very short decay so what we want to do is add texture to it by adding harmonics let's add operator E now it sounds like a tribal drum now we're going to go to F and just change the tuning. So it's going by ear. Now also, that might not do the tuning enough, so we can go back to this operator and change out the hertz value. So this is like the low part of a drum. Let's clone this. Let's paste it. Now we want the high part of the drum. So I'm going to go back to the ratio side. So you see how ratio and hertz tend to, um, you know. So I'm acting as if these are like tribal drums. Here I'm going to add a reverb to push the sound to the back. Now you don't have much control with this reverb, so it's a little unfortunate, but <clears throat> I just want early reflections on that sound. Instead of the built-in reverb, I'm going to use my own effects here, because that's not the sound I'm going for. Um, this may or may not blow up my computer, so let's hope it doesn't. True Verb from Waves has a really good early reflections. Let's try that. Now we can just turn that down. So now we're just building, we're stacking up different tones to make it one big percussion. So now I need more of a striking sound. So let's go back to FM 8 and let's copy this, paste. And now I need more of a, in, they call it atonal. So not something that has a pitch to it, but something that's more like an impact. So let's go to F. We need to give this a short. And again, metal sounds, it's higher frequencies create a more metallic sound. So we don't want a metal sounding thing. So let's just start with the Hertz and let's turn the ratio to zero for now. Let's mess with these. Then we're gonna go to E to F, modulate that. Make it a short decay and just lower the ratio here. And then we're gonna have F modulate itself to make it noisier. We could also, 
this is such complication at this point. And now we get feedback F to E. So E is shaking his little brother F. F is, if you imagine three kids, you have E shaking F, and then let's say G is shaking E. And now they're all like shaking each other. So that's basically what's happening. So we can also, instead of sending it directly out, we can send it to what's called a filter. So I could send F to a filter instead and then out to chisel out some of the harmonics here. So as you can see, FM is not the easiest uh, sound design. And then we could have this have an envelope as well. And you could turn the envelope amount up here. Then again, it just needs to have a bigger sound to it. So this is where I would add a little reverb. So let's solo just the drums. Okay, so more, with more refining and more shaping of the envelopes, you can get that to sound even more realistic. So what I'll do is I'll group all these uh, drum sounds into one track. And again, I'm kind of showing you the whole process uh, but you guys can figure out so you get you know running through compression and different processes found their knob it's called time knob so basically this lowers the uh, decay time of the reverb to make it a smaller room basically mm -hmm. 